Hi, my name is Ian Gralnick and I am the Senior Associate Editor at Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. I am joined today by Dr. Binu Jacob from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Dr. Jacob. Thank you. And we're going to be d discussing uh, her paper recently published in GIE entitled The Effect of Colonoscopy on Incidence and Mortality of Colorectal Cancer and Instrumental Variable Analysis. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of words, Dr. Jacob. <laughs> so welcome here today. Uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit about what this study was about? What did you set out to do and what did you find? Okay, sure. Uh, the use of colonoscopy has increased significantly in North America in the last decade mm -hmm. um, due to several reasons. It could be patients' demand and advocacy by uh, organizations. But however, we do not have any direct evidence on the effectiveness of screening colonoscopy. So we do have some evidence from uh, non-experimental studies that colonoscopy poly polypectomy reduces both incidence and mortality, right. but we do not have even any evidence on population-based effectiveness of screening. So, and in addition, uh, as we know, the primary care physicians, they play a significant role in the screening activities of their patients, and uh, but their um, referral pattern or the referral for screening differs due to various reasons. So there is significant variations between primary care physicians in their uh, use of screening colonoscopy. So we want to use this variation to study the effectiveness of colonoscopy in reducing uh, incidence and mortality due to colorectal cancer. Okay. So with that um, scenario, we came up with an objective to study the, ins uh, the effectiveness of colonoscopy uh, to reduce uh, the incidence and mortality. And we used, uh, using Ontario administrative data, we performed a population-based uh, retrospective cohort study. Uh, we included only patients um, uh, who were, f uh, or using the administrative data, we identified all Ontario residents aged 50 to 74 years who were uh, free of colorectal cancers or previous polyps or any previous colorectal resections, including polypectomy. And uh, we included uh, only patients who could be linked to a primary care physician. Mm -hmm. And we restricted our study to only uh, patients who had the same physician over the um, five-year study period to avoid the cross-classification of the physicians. And then we um, identified the exposure to colonoscopy among these patients. and. We followed the cohort from, uh, for, from 2001 to 2007 for outcomes such as colorectal cancer incidence and mortality. And what did you find? Yes. Uh, so uh, before telling about what we found and the uh, results, like I would like to uh, say the method we used to analyze the, uh, the study. Oh. There comes like, for, for example, evaluating a screening tool such as colonoscopy is uh, quite challenging, especially using administrative data. Yes, it is. Because there is selection bias, yes. there is confounding by indication. So to avoid that, if you use conventional statistical methods, uh, you could uh, the produce biased estimates and you will find that colonoscopy is harmful to the patients. So in order to avoid that, we um, used instrumental variable analysis. So tell us about the, what that is specifically because I think, uh, including myself, I think mm -hmm. many of our viewers have not heard of that and, and how it's important in your study. Uh, sure. So instrumental variable analysis, it's a technique borrowed from echometrics. Actually, in fact, it's coming up in epidemiological and health service research. This method is um, uh, increasingly uh, coming up, becoming popular, I would say. Uh, this method, what it uses is that, uh, as I said, when there is uh, confounding due to measured factors as well as unmeasured factors. Mm -hmm. So standard con uh, conventional mothers could uh, confound only for the measured confounding factors. The beauty of the instrumental variable analysis is that it adjusts for the unmeasured hidden confounding. Okay. Uh, in fact, it simulates a kind of randomized control trial like it, I would say it's an alternative to a randomized controlled trial because it's uh, adjusted for both the hidden and overt bias. Uh, and the problem here is that it estimates the effect only on the marginal population. When I say marginal population, suppose um, patients get referred to colonoscopy by a primary care physician, the primary care physician would be an um, enthusiast about screening, the, uh, sending the patients to screening 
compared to a colonoscopic skeptic. Mm -hmm. So patients who belong to a colonoscopy enthusiast physician will be referred more compared to the other group. And th so there is a confounding there, Correct. right? So what we wanted to do is that we want to use this physician's variation as an instrument in our study. Uh, to say so, f to do an instrumental variable analysis, you need an instrument. And to say statistically, to um, have a valid instrument, it should hold two assumptions. One is that the instrument should be correlated with the exposure; it should not be correlated with the outcome. Mm -hmm. So it has to satisfy these two criteria to have a valid instrument. If you have a valid instrument, your estimates will be more generalizable yeah. to the whole population and mm -hmm. will be less biased. And we used a uh, PCP rate of uh, screening colonoscopy, I would say, as a... So the rate that the primary care provider referred patients mm -hmm. for screening colonoscopy yes. specifically. Basically, we wanted to use the physician's intensity of screening yes. colonoscopy as an instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, while using administrative data, there was no specific code to distinguish screening colonoscopy right. versus diagnostic or surveillance So how did you... Ferret yes. that out. That was quite challenging, I would say. So what we did is that we came up with an algorithm mm -hmm. of our own, which used the mm, uh, uh, prospective inf retrospectively, we are using the prospective information of the patients. Mm -hmm. What we did is that we tried to identify a set of colonoscopies that were highly likely to have done for screening colonoscopies. Versus uh, patients who may have had symptoms that yes. were leading them to have their yes. examination. And we did not want to call them a screening, so we called them a discretionary colonoscopy. Basically, they are discretionary in nature. Mm -hmm. So the definition what we used is that a colonoscopy, a outpatient colonoscopy done in a patient's age 50 to 74 years with no apparent risk factors such as no history of colorectal cancer or polyps or polypectomy or any inflammatory bowel disease. And um, there is no subsequent diagnosis of colorectal cancer at the time of colonoscopy or three years following okay. colonoscopy. And then we call that as a discretionary colonoscopy. Okay. And the instrument we used is PCP or primary care physician's rate of discretionary colonoscopy. Has we, anybody else ever validated that definition to try and stratify the population? Uh, we did not validate the instrument as such, but it came up with the concerns from several experts in okay. the field. Um, and to validate the instrument is quite hard though. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I think I should explain that in the end to see how okay. these two in assumptions hold. And so once you've identified this population that you thought was getting a discretionary colonoscopy, so what, what did you find? So using this instrumental variable analysis, what we found that uh, we had around 1.1 million patients in the cohort mm -hmm. and approximately eight percentage of the patients received a colonoscopy. Uh, so what we found Eight percent. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So that's yeah. pretty mm -hmm. small. Yeah. yeah, prevalence of colonoscopy. In fact, the whole colorectal cancer screening is quite low mm -hmm. in the po general population. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we found is that uh, using uh, the colonoscopy or the receipt of colonoscopy is associated with a 0.60 percentage of absolute risk reduction in the incidence. Okay. Uh, due to colorectal cancer, that when I say that's a seven uh, cumulative seven-year incidence, mm -hmm. and again the receipt of colonoscopy is associated with a zero point one seven percentage absolute risk reduction associated okay. with mortality. Okay. Uh, that corresponds. So both significant reduction mm -hmm. in incidence as well as colorectal related uh, mortality. Mortality. That's yeah. right. That overall colonoscopy is effective in reducing both incidence and mortality due to colorectal cancer. Now I also I also noticed, and maybe you could explain your thoughts as to why, is that it appeared to be more protective for left-sided as well as mm -hmm. rectal uh, uh, cancers. lesions, cancers. Mm -hmm. Any hypotheses as to why? And we've, we've seen before that right-sided cancers we may not be as good at detecting. How does that mm -hmm. play into this? Actually, a couple of other studies also came up with the same um, mm -hmm. conclusion telling that uh, colonoscopy is less effective in detecting the right side cancers compared to the left side cancers. In fact, and another famous study from Canada showed that's that. That's true. And yes. she is, Dr. Baxter is one of the other of us. Correct. Correct. That's true. Um, so the... the there could be several reasons. Uh, reasons. There is like uh, 
uh, difference in the anatomic or pathological or molecular variations between the two sides. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be one of the reason. And there are also the right side lesions are uh, proven to be flat. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 assumed that through colonoscopy, through a complete, uh, unless the colonoscopy is done very satisfactorily, it's very difficult to identify the flat lesions. So that could be another reason for the low effectiveness of the right side cancers. Mm. So what, what is your, for our viewers to, to summarize, what, what is your main takeaway message or messages here from your findings? Uh, so from my study, I would say overall colonoscopy is effective in reducing colorectal cancer incidence and mortality, uh, even though the effectiveness is restricted only to the left side cancers, I agree. Uh, but uh, when you consider it as a primary screening modality, modality in the general population or in average risk population, we should consider both the effectiveness as well as the risk factors and the resources available that has to come to it. Yes, you know, I, I congratulate you. I think it's a very interesting study. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very interesting methodological design that you were able to take administrative data mm -hmm. and uh, utilize instrumental variable analysis mm -hmm. and actually try and make that the, the day that you have much more relevant mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also hopeful that others will take this as a model exactly. to use and apply this to other administrative databases and look for if this is similar findings in other populations within and outside of Canada. Exactly. So I congratulate you and your co-authors. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being yeah. here today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you having me.